is, is, can I speak to Louise, please? Hi. Hello there. My name's Georgina Smith. I'm one of the doctors working at intensive care unit at St Clair's Infirmary. Okay, hi. Hello there. I know we've been using a code word to have our conversations with you. Yes. Um, do, do you have that? Yes, yes, amethyst. Thank you. Hello. This is nothing to worry about. This is just an update that I'm phoning to give you um, today about Joanna. Okay. I know that you have had been, you know, been having daily updates. Um, tell me, Kent, if you don't mind, what the situation that you understand so far has been so that I can know exactly what you know and what we need to now tell you as new information. OK, well, um, Joanna came came into the hospital about five days ago. Breathing got quite bad. Yeah. Um, bad enough that they wanted to put her on a, a ventilator. That's right. So she's been on that now for, yeah, for nearly two days. Yesterday I was told that she did need a little bit more oxygen right. through the ventilator. And also the, the doctor mentioned something about the kidneys being mildly impaired, right. um, which didn't, I mean, mm -hmm. doesn't sound great, but it didn't sound too serious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, she is much the same today as she was yesterday, um, but I can hear that questioning your voice about what the doctor meant about the kidneys being impaired. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, COVID-19 is primarily one that affects people's breathing and as you know that's what um, caused uh, Joanna to actually come into hospital initially which then we weren't able to support her adequately on Norderney Ward and that was what led to the decision to bring her into the intensive care unit, use a ventilator to do the breathing for her to support her. Mm. Now every bit of additional support that is required is a sign that the disease process is, is worse in that particular person. Mm. Mm. The fact that we've had to increase the amount of oxygen we're giving Joanna wasn't a good sign for us to see yesterday. But the fact things are stable between yesterday and today, I feel is, is a relatively positive sign. Okay. The other issue is that of the kidneys. Mm. As you said, the doctor yesterday mentioned the fact that the kidneys were mildly impaired. That again is a sign that this COVID disease in her situation is causing other organs apart from her lungs to have problems. Sometimes the kidneys pick up of their own accord and start to improve, sometimes they deteriorate further. Her, her blood test today compared to yesterday show that her kidneys are stable between those two days. So again she's holding her own at the moment, it's only time that will tell us which way things are going to go. Does that make sense to you? It does, obviously. Um... It's worrying. Yes. Yes, it, it is worrying. Um, and I, th I think you're right to be concerned. She she is very, very poorly. She's amongst the most poorly people in the hospital. It's very hard to appreciate that, especially when you're not able to see her properly. Which makes this all the more harder for people. The last time I spoke to her was before she went into ITU um, and went on the ventilator. Um, and I'm concerned that I won't get to speak to her again. It's my biggest concern. I know. That it must be incredibly hard to not be able to see her and not be able to communicate with her. I'm so sorry. Mm. I mean, is, is this something that people turn around from at this stage? In all honesty, it is very hard to, to predict who are going to come through okay and who aren't. This is a very, very uncertain time. I said, what I don't want to happen is that we get a phone call to say Joanna has died. Like, I, I need to prepare the kids for that and I think if there's any possibility that that's going to happen we need to be told. Can things happen quite suddenly with this? They, they can they can do yes sometimes we have some sort of forewarning that people are deteriorating rapidly um, and we can contact relatives but sometimes it's, it's much more sudden and so I think it is important to, to talk to the girls about the fact that she is seriously unwell and there is uncertainty as, as to whether she will survive this. I'm so sorry. So really I should I should do that preparation in what way? I think that's sensible. 
I think it will help them. Uh, there's not really anything else I can ask that's going to... I mean, it's just a kind of waiting game, isn't it? It is. It is. I'm sorry, that does make it so much harder for you. It really does, and it's, that's excruciating, to be honest. You know, sitting in the house all day is it's the worst. It really There's is. no distraction from it. No, there really isn't. And, um, I just want to hold a hand. I'm sorry, that does make it so much harder. <sighs> Obviously, I, I normally get a call in the evening. If I don't hear from you, then it's nothing's changed, right? If you don't hear from us, nothing's changed. We always do contact people. If something significant has changed, we would always contact you in advance of your, your scheduled phone call um, to, to let you know. But so, yes, so no news is, is stable news, basically. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no problem. I appreciate um, your honesty. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.